The 2024 NFL Draft is in the books, and it was a major success for your Seattle Seahawks here on this edition of Seattle Seahawks Today. We will break down every single pick. We'll give our grades as well as our overall grade for the first draft for new head coach Mike McDonald alongside general manager John Schneider as we begin a new era of Seahawks football. We will discuss all of that and more coming up on today's show. Before we do, man, we have had a fun couple of days here on the channel. We went live on Thursday. We went live today. And we're not done here on Seahawks Today. Join us tomorrow as we'll break down all of the UDFA signings as well. So stay tuned for that. Also, we are your off-season headquarters here on Seahawks Today. We'll get you all the info you need on rookie minicamp, minicamp OTAs, get you set for training camp, all of that and more. We are your one-stop shop for all things Seattle Seahawks. If you're a real member of the 12s, you got to subscribe to the channel. Seahawks Today by Chad Sports. Subscribe now for free for more Seahawks coverage all offseason long. Let's begin with Byron Murphy, the defensive tackle from the University of Texas. This pick has to be an A for me. I love what the Seahawks are doing, going with Byron Murphy, plugging up the inside of the defensive line with the best defensive tackle in this draft. Byron Murphy does it all. The Seahawks have had this need for a very long time of getting help in the interior of the defensive line and getting a run stopper. And we heard from Mike McDonald say a while back that the direction he wants to go with the Seahawks defense is that they want to build a wall inside. And if you want to build a wall, you found quite the building block, the foundational piece with Byron Murphy, who should be your starter there at defensive tackle for many years to come. You pair him up with Draymond Jones, and Leonard Williams, you also have Jaron Reed involved here. The Seahawks defensive line got better overnight. Not only do they take care of this need, he was arguably the best player available when the Seahawks picked at 16 as well. I think it's a brilliant pick for the Seattle Seahawks to get their guy to take care of business and go with somebody that just does everything well. Gets after the quarterback, stops the run. I love Byron Murphy. He's going to be a natural fit for this Seahawks defense for many, many years to come. Watch out for Byron Murphy. Then the Seahawks did not have a second round pick. We jump ahead to round three in the 81st overall pick, and the Seahawks found a good one in Christian Haynes out of UConn. A two-time All-American, the first ever All-American for the UConn Huskies. And we've talked about for at length the Seahawks needing help in the interior of the offensive line. And with Christian Haynes, you found somebody that's got a ton of experience playing at a high level, both as a very good pass blocker and a run blocker. And I'll say this, one thing about Haynes, too, that we heard time and time again from whether it was his own coaches or people like Joel Klatt from Fox Sports, is that he's a team-first guy. He is a fantastic human being. So not only did you get a quality football player that's going to compete to start right away, for the Seahawks on that offensive line, but also you, you got a good guy, too. I'm not going to have any character concerns about Christian Haynes. He is going to be a natural fit in this Seahawks locker room, and I think he's going to be a leader for this team sooner than later. Now, the question becomes, will we see Murphy and Haynes start day one for the Seattle Seahawks? I like both guys. I like their potential. Are they going to be ready to go right from the jump? Because they got some competition here. Murphy competing with Jaron Reed, Haynes competing with Anthony Bradford and Lincoln Tomlinson and company. What do you think? Will both these guys get things started right away for the CL Seahawks? Weigh in the comment section. Let, let us know what you think. Why for yes, in for no, and our pinned comment today. Will they get the job from day one? Let us know. Today's show is sponsored by Mando. Baseball season is here, and nobody likes a foul ball, just like nobody likes a smelly dude. That's where Mando comes into play. Step up to the plate and take your personal hygiene more seriously. With the Mando whole body deodorant developed by a doctor, this game-changing formula is safe for your entire body and knocks out odor like a champ. Mando is made with mandelic acid, which picks off odor at the source, keeping you fresh for up to 72 hours. Mando is available in solid sticks, invisible cream, body wash, cleaning bars, and deodorant wipes for on-the-go use. Don't let foul balls ruin your game. Switch to Mando and keep your body in order in fair territory. 
Get $5 off when you go to shopmando.com. And I got some product here for you so you can see for yourself. This right here is the Invisible Cream Deodorant. I'm going to smell for myself here. And I got to tell you, that's some great stuff right there. Also got the cleaning uh, deodorant wipes as well. Some fantastic products from Mando. Go see for yourself and save $5 off the starter pack when you use the promo code CHAT at checkout. That is promo code CHAT at checkout. Link is in the comments and description of today's video. Go check out Mando today, and you will be glad you did for the best value around. We move ahead to the fourth round now. The Seahawks had a pick at 102, then traded with the Denver Broncos to move down to 121 and picked up a fifth and sixth round pick in the process, giving away a seventh round pick. And at 118, they go with Tyrese Knight out of the University of UTEP, a linebacker. The reason why I got a C-plus on this is that it was a bit of a reach here for the Seahawks to go with Knight. We had here at Chad Sports Knight with about a fifth or sixth round grade. So you probably could have waited till later to get Tyrese Knight. Not to mention, you had some other players available, like Tommy Eichenberg, uh, just as one example that we graded out higher than Knight. But nonetheless, a very athletic player. The Seahawks had a need at the linebacker position, and they get a guy that is a willing tackler, had 140 tackles this past season at UTEP. That was uh, the most of any player in all of Conference USA. He was a first-team all-conference selection there at uh, UTEP this past season. Has some work to do when it comes to coverage, and we've seen the Seahawks with a renewed emphasis this offseason with coverage linebackers. But nonetheless, I like the project. I just thought it was a little bit too high. That's why I go C-plus here. Then a couple of picks later, 121, the Seahawks go with A.J. Barner out of the University of Michigan, a national champion. He began his career at Indiana, comes to Michigan this year, and wins that national title. But his role was kind of insignificant, if we're going to be honest, with the Michigan Wolverines. He wasn't even the best tight end on his own team. He's a very good run blocker. And while we talked a lot about on this show over the last several weeks that the Seahawks needed to find another tight end to play alongside Noah Fant, I was hoping for more of a receiving threat at the tight end spot. Could have had a guy like Cade Stover, for example. Instead, they go A.J. Barner. And here's one thing to keep in mind. The Seahawks are still looking for a true red zone threat. A.J. Borner really wasn't that at Michigan. Could they potentially turn him into that? That remains to be seen, but that's why I have the pick as a C for Borner there at 121. Then we go to the fifth round at 136. This is where we find Nehemiah Pritchett out of Auburn with the pick here, and the Seahawks with some much-needed help in the cornerback room. Uh, going with Pritchett here, who had a solid career there in the Southeastern Conference. Going to be interesting to see how he exactly fits. And keep in mind, I know some of you were in the comments section saying, why are the Seahawks drafting corner? We got depth at that spot. Well, you got to start thinking about the future here. We don't know how much longer Mike Jackson's going to be around. We don't know how much longer Trey Brown is going to be around. Got to find some other pieces. Remember, Kobe Bryant's playing safety. He's not playing corner anymore. Uh, so I like to pick to find some more depth at that position, all go B-plus there. Then we go to the sixth round, and you talk about terrific value here for the Seahawks as they are able to get Satoa Lumea with the pick. I got to go with an A here because our staff here at Chat Sports, we had uh, this as a guy that was rated as a third or fourth round player, and you found him at the sixth round. Tons of experience there at the University of Utah as he Played a lot of snaps there for the uh, Utah Utes. And this is a program that has a good track record of developing offensive linemen. I really like the job with Kyle Winningham has done finding those gritty offensive linemen. And this is another one here for the Seahawks. And there's some potential positional flexibility here. Uh, guard, tackle, we'll see. But a lot of competition for those guard spots for Seattle there. Then we go to pick... Uh, Number 192 for Seattle. That's where we find another Auburn corner. This time, it's DJ James, uh, a teammate of Nehemiah Pritchard there at Auburn. And DJ James is going to be fascinating to see what the Seahawks do with him. There's 
Uh, talk about him as a potential nickel corner, also a role on special teams as well. Uh, but a good find there late in this draft for a project to see where he could potentially fit in, especially with the new kickoff rules too, the renewed emphasis there and the Seahawks trying to find guys to compete out there. I'll go with a B-plus with this grade there. The final pick for the Seahawks, they ended the draft with a bit of an unknown here as they go with Mike Gerrill out of Finlay University, a Division II program, but he was the best of the best. He was an all-conference selection, uh, the best offensive lineman in his entire conference there at the offensive tackle position, was an all-regional player as well. So although although he's a bit of an unknown, he's the best uh, of what that area had to offer there. Because of the unknown, i got to go see here. But overall, a fantastic draft for the Seattle Seahawks. You know, we, we come away with this draft, and I think we can all sit here and say to ourselves, the Seahawks got a lot better over these last couple of days. And John Schneider, his first draft with not having Pete Carroll over his shoulder, he knocked it out of the park. I thought he did a fantastic job, especially right away with those first two picks with Byron Murphy and Chris Haynes. Uh, I'll give you my grade in just a second, my overall grade. It's going to be pretty good, I can tell you that much. But Seahawk fans, reason to be excited about the direction of this franchise and the building blocks of where things are at. What is your final grade for the Seahawks draft? A, B, C, D, or F? Weigh in the comment section. Be honest with me and let me know what you think. I got to go A here. To me, this is a very easy A, if you will. Great movie uh, for the Seattle Seahawks with those first two picks uh, and then filling out, taking care of needs, finding some good value pieces here. The future is bright for the Seattle Seahawks. Get some shades on because there are some fantastic days ahead in Seattle. For more coverage this offseason, subscribe now to Seahawks Today. We're talking UDFAs tomorrow. We will see you then.